I was told there was camping here, when I got here the lady says, well there's no camping here, I don't know what you're talking about, so I've got my tent, so she's found there's a spot, apparently there's a band camping here, and they've made this area, it's part of the project, but I can't go in any of the houses, I've got to pitch my tent, and some moss ground over there, so <laughs> I'm just leaving some stuff here, I'm going to talk to the comedy people, then come back and pitch my fucking tent, so hopefully it doesn't fall down in the middle of the night, which I think it probably will. All fun and games at Wildwoods. So that's my tent. Guess what? They only gave me three pegs. Three pegs to put up a tent. So basically, that's what I've got to work with. It's the most pathetic. That's how a tent should be put up. And that's how my tent's put up. If it rains tonight, or if I fart, I'm fucked, basically. The tent will fall down quite dramatically. Anyway, this is the scene, it's pretty cool. I've already talked to a couple of the comedians, the guys organising it. And uh, going back there on route to sort of the running order. And we'll get them changed in the knob just yet. We'll save that for later. Bye. Something else weird happened. I forgot to bring a hairband. I need a hairband. And I was going to ask somebody if they had one, but I opened my car door and found that. A green hairband, green for the old high bees. Or forest or something, I don't know, but anyway. Well, here comes the police. Fucking bastards. Aye. Let's pretend to be a normal human being that doesn't warrant to rest. <laughs> They asked me, Robert, do you have any weaknesses? And I was like, yeah, I'm a sucker for a jam donut. <laughs> <laughs> um, from my driveway, I can see the sea. I can also see the U, the N, and the T spray painted on my driveway. <laughs> There's a misunderstanding with the man next door. I worked a day in his life. <laughs> Thanks, Anessu. <laughs> Love you. Right, so there's a lot of negative things to having a lazy eye. For instance, I have no depth perception whatsoever. Just no depth perception, right? I just don't get Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of neutral things to having a lazy eye as well. Like, for instance, I found out I have a lot more in common with some of my elderly family members than I ever thought I had, right? You know, because when I get, when I have a couple of drinks in me, my eye, you know, gets tired and it starts to lean to the right. And when they have a couple of drinks in them, their opinions also <laughs> get racist. <laughs> <laughs> Switch mines with yours because mine doesn't seem to be working. Because <laughs> um, mine is made of a purely like pseudocreme <laughs> and orphan's tears. <laughs> so if you want to buy some, it's like 50 pounds for five mil. We have it in the back of the car. <laughs> it's as camp as I can do. Uh, he said the other neighbours left for Italy. I said, Oh, whereabouts? He said, Do you know her? I said, Well, no, we hardly ever speak. <laughs> But my neighbour, right, he had this really vicious looking cat. Now, I was really afraid of this thing, but he suggested, you know, I just try giving it a stroke. Yeah. Took a few weeks, then after making it smoke a lot of cigarettes, it finally had one. <laughs> and I thought that noise was related to what I just said, but it wasn't. So. Uh, <laughs> when my pet gerbil died, I took him to a taxidermist, and I suppose he'd five grand or something, you can stuff that then. <laughs> <laughs> Your reaction's pretty um, My heart went out to a school kids attacked by that polar bear. I don't know if you remember that story. 
uh, well at least until I found out they're from public schools. Uh, a bit of an irony to that story because the kids that were mauled and survived, they were from Harrow, and the one that didn't was eaten. <laughs> and cruel lot. <laughs> uh, so I ordered a goose online but they sent me a pelican, well I knew something was up when I saw the size of the bill. <laughs> Uh, I may be polyamorous, but that doesn't mean I can't still like a cockatoo. <laughs> so I was waiting to cross the road and this chicken came along to do the same thing. I thought, oh, that's good, isn't it? Chicken crossing the road. So I laughed at the reference. And the chicken laughed so hard it laid an egg. I thought, well, it's not every day I get a standing ovulation. <laughs> uh, so the last festival I did was actually down in Brighton at the far end of the other country. And they've, they've actually got a green MP there, Caroline Lucas, so they're very like, into the environmental stuff, which is, which is great. So like, I'd just eaten an apple and I thought, well, I want to be uh, environmentally conscious and dispose of my apple in, in the right kind of way. But I was presented with so much, I, I didn't want to do. Like, there was a blue bin, there was a green bin, a yellow bin, a black bin, a brown bin. But what do I do? What do I dispose of it? Then it suddenly dawned on me, well, of course, I'm in Brighton. I need to put it in the one on the very far left, the Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> so here I am with Rihanna, looking pretty and, and cool. Joanne from the Clay Studio. Is this allowed? Right. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. We're going to advertise so your studio. Where are we going? We're going to the Black. We're going to the party. Uh huh. <laughs> Wood, Woodstock. We're going to go get uh. naughty. <laughs> Woodstock. <laughs> But nobody yeah, we're told just admiring uh, Rihanna's legs here. Uh, but nobody told yeah. us that um, <laughs> there was a comedy thing up here, which I'm a bit disappointed about. And then I said cunt a lot, yeah. and your parents came you and told you. It's a stipulation. <laughs> He doesn't put when you take a photo of tits yeah. and arse, yeah. then I'm going to fucking rub his favourite up in tiny bits. Exactly, so this guy's under pressure now. Tits and arse has to be in the article. If it's not in the yeah. press journal by Monday, big problem. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be in the press journal. I will. It's in the Inverness in journal. Here, no? <laughs> you are fucking safe. <laughs>
Okay, there's the end of the stage here. You can't even see me, can you? It's pretty dark. So basically, the night is wrapping up. Aye. And uh, it's been awesome, by the way. Wild Woods Festival is fucking awesome. The DJ is playing 13 foot elevators, psychotic reaction by uh, the Count Five, Electric Prunes, and then all other kinds of awesome stuff. Even Erasure, a little respect came on. And uh, totally epic festival. The other bands and the other stage, they were really good. Comedy thing went quite well. All in all, an awesome experience. Definitely recommend Wildwoods next year. Let's support these people because they put a lot of hard work into it. Dave and Charlotte. And it's been a really great day. Ooh, no doubt about it. And there we make Claire as well over there. See you later. Claire's cool. Anyway, catch you later. Bye bye. So I've just got to my tent. Always it's pretty dark and guess what? The rain started. So it starts to push down. God help me in this tent because it is hanging together by a thread. Over and out, Woodstock, Wellstock, whatever the fuck you call it, it's been awesome. Cheers and out, bye bye. So here we are. My tent got soaking wet. Slept in water last night. Wasn't very comfortable. But it was a good festival. Good times. Now I just have to pack the water laden tent up and hit the road. Rock and roll. Woodstock. Catch you later.